Hey guys, what is going on? It's your boy Soldier here, back with a brand new series on the channel. In this series, I'm going to be showing you how to create custom blocks and custom items that you can interact with and all stuff like that in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. For this series, you will need a couple of requirements. You will need Visual Studio Code. You will need WinRAR. You will need to find your com.mojang folder. And you will need to download these two packs that I've got down in the description below. And you don't need Adobe Photoshop, but it is something that will make your life a lot easier if you do get something like this. Anyway, guys, let's get right into the video. So first off, you will need to find your com.mojang folder. Once you've found it, go into there. And you will see two folders called development behavior packs and development resource packs. You want to go into your development behavior packs and get the folder that I created for you. And you want to drag that behavior pack folder, which is bedrock dev BP into development behavior packs. After that, we are then going to go to development resource packs and do the exact same thing with the bedrock dev resource pack folder that I've gave you also download link in the description for that. Once you have got both of them in your development resource packs, we're then going to load up Minecraft. After loading up Minecraft, you want to click play. Then you want to click create new. Then you want to click create new world. From here, you want to name your world whatever you want. I'm going to call mine bedrock dev. After that, you want to put the default game mode to creative and click on continue. Difficulty, I like to put that on peaceful. Then you want to scroll down and you can set personal preferences here. Stuff like turning on and off fire spread, TNT and churn, turning on show coordinates. Then we want to scroll down to where it says experiments. Caves and cliffs does not have to be on but I recommend turning on everything else inside of here. Otherwise, the custom blocks and custom items will not work. You can choose whether to have Education Edition on or off, but I'm going to turn it on just so I can mess around with some of the element blocks later on in the series. I recommend you guys doing this as well for your world. But the most important things here is making sure all of the experiments are on. You can choose whether to have caves and cliffs on or off, but all the others have to be on for custom items to work. And you can also choose whether to have education edition on or off. I'm going to turn off do daylight cycle so it's always day. From here, you want to scroll down on the left, go to resource packs, go into my packs, and then click on where it says bedrock dev tutorial park and click on that and click activate. Then go to behavior packs, go to my packs, and go to bedrock dev tutorial pack, click on that, and click activate. This may say this for one or more dependencies, but that's perfectly fine. Just click continue, and then click on it again, and click activate. Click continue once again, and it should activate. After that, you then want to click create, and wait for the world to load up. While this world is loading up, you then want to open Visual Studio Code. From here, you will be greeted with a welcome message and there should be an X up the top here that you can click to close. After that, you then want to make your way to the Explorer up here or you can press Control, Shift and E. After that, you then want to click here, Open Folder. From here, you want to then find your com.mojang folder once again. From here, you're going to click on development behavior packs, bedrock dev BP, and click add. Then you want to click yes. Then we're going to go under where it says bedrock dev BP here. We're going to right click. We're going to click add folder to workspace. And then we're going to go into development resource packs. I'm going to click Bedrock Dev RP and you want to click Add and then you want to click Yes. Now we should have everything laid out and ready to go. 
Then you want to open up Minecraft again and simply make sure you're in creative mode and make sure all of the experimental features are turned on by simply pressing escape, going to settings, going to game and scrolling down and making sure that it says experiments here and make sure all of these are to the right. Now we've got the world set up, Visual Studio set up, we are ready to start editing the packs. In today's video, we are going to work on making an item in the game simple and easy to do. In the packs, you should see in the Bedrock Dev Behavior Pack, I've set up two folders that say Block Setup and Item Setup. From here, we're going to go into the Item Setup and we're going to see a little text document. Mine looks a little bit different because I do have extensions on. If you want to know what the extensions are, you can go down in the description and get the extension folders for language MC function. And I'll make a video on that soon on how to get this on Visual Studio. But for now, let's focus on the item setup. So from here, we are going to copy this entire folder and you're going to go to where it says items. You're going to right click on the items folder, click on new file, and we're going to name this test space test underscore. Sorry, you can't have spaces in this. You're going to put test underscore item dot JSON. Then we're going to enter it. In the test underscore item dot JSON folder or file, we are going to paste in the little text that we copied from item setup. From here, we are then going to go to the identifier and you can change this to whatever you want. So I'm going to leave it as SR test. The texture, we're going to leave that as SR test and I'll show you why we do that in just a moment. Now for the display name, you can make this whatever you want. For the video purpose, I'm just going to type in test. Is it working? Then we're going to click on file and we're going to click save all. So after editing the test underscore item dot JSON folder that we have just created, you can mess around with the value. Like I said, you can leave the texture as it is, but make sure you keep a mental note of this. We can always come back to it, but make sure you keep a mental note of it. And the identifier is what we're going to be calling it when we want to give yourself or another player the item. Now let's set up a texture for it and let's also set up where the game can find this. So from here, we're going to scroll down on the left and we're gonna click on something called Bedrock Dev RP. I'm gonna scroll down again. I'm gonna find textures, open that. Then we're gonna find something called item underscore texture dot JSON. Click on that. And from here, we're going to do some simple editing. So we're going to highlight this part right here that says texture underscore name atlas dot items. And we're going to get rid of that. Then on this blue comma, sorry, on this blue bracket here, we're going to put a comma. Then we're going to copy this part right here called wooden door. And we're going to copy that. Then we're going to click on this comma here and press enter. Then you want to paste in where you put wooden, where you copied wooden door. You want to paste that down here. And we're going to name where it says wooden door. We're going to change that to what we called our texture. In our case, it's called SR colon test. After that, you then want to change where it's going to be located. 
So it's going to be in the textures folder. And then we're going to put forward slash. Then we're going to type in custom. We're going to put forward slash. And then we're going to name what our texture is going to be called in the folder. In my case, we're just going to put test. After that, you then want to click enter. Then you want to put a closed curly bracket. Then you want to press enter again. Shift closed curly bracket. Press enter again and then shift closed curly bracket. After that, your folder should be your file should be looking a little bit like this. Now we're going to follow this path right here. So we're going to go to the textures folder. Let's go and do that. We have done right here in the textures folder. Then we've got custom right here. So we're going to right click textures. We're going to put a new folder and we're going to call it custom. After that, we're going to name a PNG. Make sure the picture that you have got for this item is a PNG. We're going to be naming it test. I'm going to put it inside of the custom folder here under textures. So I'll be back once I've grabbed a random picture that I can find and we're going to call it test. Make sure, like I said, that you grab a PNG picture. If you can't find one, then you can always go onto Google and grab a PNG of anything just to make sure that this works. I'll be back with you once I've found one. So in my case, I decided to grab a PNG picture of the crossbow. Now we're going to go to where it says crossbow.png under the custom. And we're going to rename this what we called it in the folder, which was test. So let's do that right now. And we're going to click enter. After doing that, guys, we can simply then come out of custom and open up Minecraft. From here, you will need to save and quit the bedrock world that we created. And then go back in to the bedrock dev world that you just quit. Now, the reason why we're restarting the world is because we added a new folder. Make sure that you click file and click save all before loading the world up. I kind of forgot. So because I forgot, we're simply going to click save and quit. And we're going to reload the world once again. So just make sure that you go to file and click save all before loading the world up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open the chat bar here and we're going to type in give space at s and then we're going to type in the identifier that we gave it. So in my case it's sr and then we're going to put colon and we're going to type in the name. As you guys can see we have been given an item called test with a texture. Now. The texture is a little bit big, but like I said, we're simply just making a custom item in today's video. Now, yes, this is a big texture. I will show you guys how to fix that. Uh, and you can use online image editors if you really want or online PNG resizers. But guys, you have now successfully created your own item inside of Minecraft. You've set up a resource pack and behavior pack for it. And you know how to use Visual Studio a little bit better. So guys, that is part one where we have now created our custom item. And we've given it a name. As you guys see when we hold it, it says test. Is it working? So we know that's working. And also the identifier is working. And clearly the texture is working as well. But the texture is a little bit big. That depends on how big of a PNG you gave to the game to put on. 
But anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching part one of Bedrock Dev. In part two, we will be creating a custom block and we will be setting up a little function that runs every time we use either the block or the item. I haven't really thought of which one we'll do yet, but if you guys want to vote for that, then let me know down in the comments. But that's how you create a custom item in Minecraft. Like I said, next video will be a custom block. Again, make sure to subscribe and like and tell me what you want to see me create in Bedrock. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. I love you all. Stay soulless. Peace.